Це кум. О, сигмоид колон, що є, сигмоид колон. Це кум. Асцендин пад. Place of liver. In the gate of the liver. Yes. No information, no view, but we knew that they are place for localization of gout bladder and inside the place of localization pancreas. So some another picture with the main function of uh, any organs and about projection. Yes, oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, place of diaphragm, if we return into previous picture, place of the diaphragm, and we discussed with you that the level of the standing of diaphragm, considering with the level of the lower edge of the lung from the right side, and considering with the um, upper edge or upper um, boundary of the liver. Gelt bladder, common bile duct, common bile duct with um, <clears throat> which uh, enter into the initial part of duodenum uh, with the pancreatic duct, pancreas there we can view it and small and a um, large intestine and uh, normally position of the stomach position of the stomach also depends from the condition of the patient about localization stomach and small intestine transverse colon sigmoid colon spleen and the liver located to peritoneally and covered by the distal peritoneum uh, from all sides ascending descending colon located mesoperitoneally and covered uh, by the peritoneum only from the three sides kidney adrenal glands pancreas and most of the duodenum are located retroperitoneally and are covered by the peritoneum only uh, from the one side and when passing to some intraperitoneal located organ, small and call intestine, the peritoneum forming duplicates and duplicators um, or um, mesenteries. And uh, the important moment in the structure of mesenterium is the bloody supply and vessels of the mesenteriums. So, moments about questioning of the patient with disease of esophagus. Yes, we start not from the oral cavity, we start from the init exactly initial part for us, like a therapist, from the esophagus. And firstly, we will discuss a problem with the esophagus. So, questioning a patient with disease of esophagus. The main complaints of patients with diseases of other esophagus included, first of all, dysphagia, pain, heartburn, burping and regurgitation, vomiting, bleeding, and high carbs. And also, some patients can tell you... Um, a list of general compliance, which included general wave loss, uh, wave loss till the cachexy. It's not an emplastic form of cachexy, but um, mm, such conditions, uh, such um, disease of the esophagus uh, will be leading to wave loss, general weakness, and sometimes fever. About dysphagia, dysphagia is uh, the difficulty Is a difficulty in passing food through the esophagus, through the lumen of the esophagus. And for reasons of occurrence, dysphagia is divided into two types functional reasons and organic reasons, or reasons of functional dysphagia or and organic dysphagia. About functional dysphagia occurs due to evaluation of the mechanism of nervous regulation of the swallowing act and the coordinated activity of the sphincters. So the main problem is violation of the mm, mechanism of nervous regulation of such process, uh, such process like a swollen and the activity of the opening and uh, closing of the sphincters. More often, the cause of functional dysphagia will be a spasm of the low esophageal sphincter. Low is a sphincter in case of cardiac echology and cardiospasm.
So damaging in the activity of the allowisophageal sphincter can lead into development functional dysphagia more often. Which signs of functional dysphagia uh, we have to know? Uh, is more common in individuals with a label autonomic nervous system with neurosis, neurasthenia, and botulism poisoning, for example. So it's significant and intact such compliance like a dysphagia, functional dysphagia, are significant for very nervous person. More commonly seen in young adults, not in the old age, is paradoxical. The passage of liquid, uh, liquid food is disturbed while solid food passed without difficulty. And it's the main difference between the, um, the organic dysphagia, paradoxical dysphagia or functional dysphagia will be paradoxical. The passage of the liquid food is, is not disturbed and go in an entry is like a usually way, but about solid food passed um, without difficulty. Around situation, yes, liquid, um, liquid um, food uh, enters probably, but um, normally food included solid food passed without difficulty. So paradox. Hot or cold food, especially often provokes functional dysphagia about irritation the nerve system. So such changing in the temperature of the food can lead to provoke functional dysphagia. Functional dysphagia is paroxysmal, like you sporadically, intermittently, and often with hasty food. All these signs about functional dysphagia. Organic dysphagia occurs due to mechanical compression of the esophagus from the inside or outside. So problem and key problem and point problem, not in the uh, regulation and nurse regulation. Organic dysphagia, uh, we can find in case of compression on pressing to the wall of the esophagus, which leading to damaging uh, the normally activities of the wall of the esophagus from the outsides which causes, first of all, sure, it, it's tumor of the esophagus. Inside the esophagus, yes, under the intima, under the cover, under the epithelium, diverticulums of the esophagus, which also can be um, um, a stopped moment for um, the passage of the food. Hytal hernia and especially fixed hernia, which leading to um, which leading to change normal anatomy of the esophagus, post ulcer and post burn cystical stenosis, also which leading to deorganization normal anatomy and deorganization of a normal uh, functional ability of the esophagus with passage of the food, and compression of the esophagus from the outside. For example, in case of enlargement, uh, right ventricle, in case of mitral stenosis and pressing the wall of the um, right ventricle to the esophagus, in case of developing aortic aneurysm and pressing dilated abdominal part of aorta to the abdominal part of the esophagus, metastasis to the neighbor lymph nodes or, or um, to the mediastinum. Also, enlargement lymph nodes and the size can press to the esophagus and change uh, the normal view, the normal anatomy of the mediastinum. So, the main causes uh, organic dysphagia. Also, we can differentiate it by two um, effects, in, in, uh, by, by two groups and effect inside and outside. On inside reasons like a tumor of esophagus, diverticulums of esophagus, and ex post ulcer and post burn cystical stenosis, it's also a problem outside of the lumen of esophagus. Hytal hernia, outside problem, compression of the esophagus from anything uh, from the outside. Also, it's outside problem. Tumor of the neighbor organs, uh, enlargement in the size of right ventricula, enlargement in the size neighbor lymph nodes, uh, which change in the normal anatomy of the mediation. Which signs of organic dysfunction um, in the front view from the functional dysphagia? Dis, uh, First of all, is more common in elderly and middle-aged people. 
At the beginning, the passage of solid dry food is difficult and patients are forced to soften uh, it by drinking fluids and prefer uh, the liquid part, uh, the liquid type of uh, meal. As it progresses, the passage of crushed food and then liquid is gradually difficult. Progressive character day to day, the process will be um, the process will be um, progressed. Is progressive in nature. Self restoration of patient of patency of the esophagus often a sign of decaying tumor. Surely, uh, the most um, dangerous uh, sign of organic dysfunction, it's a weight loss from the side of the patient cause, it will be a sign of neoplastic form. And unfortunately, in the, the main uh, nature of the organic dysfunction, it's developing of uh, such uh, different types of neoplastic forms, including uh, cancer. Next compliance, patient with um, disease of the esophagus, surely pain. Pain in disease of the esophagus is often combined with dysphagia and will be preceded during dysphagia and will be combined with the dysphagia. Uh, the patient will determine it in the same time. First of all, and look for signs of this uh, type of pain. Localize it, uh, localize it behind the sternum. It radiates to the interscapular spaces and the left half of the chest. Its characteristic feature is the appearance or intensification, then swallowing uh, uh, with food. Look first two signs of pain uh, in patients with esophagus diseases. Consider it with the signs um, in patients with coronary heart diseases, yes, but localization and classically irradiation which we can explain uh, by the neighbor regulation. Yes, neighbor regulation and the same uh, ways of regulation. But another characteristic, for example, for pain with coronary heart disease, it will be that provoke um, uh, by physical uh, and emotional load. In this case, uh, this type of pain, characteristic feature and the appearance identification, the pain inside uh, and behind the sternum uh, during swallowing uh, with food. The nature of the pain is determined by the mechanism of its occurrence. And there are several types of pain according to the mechanism of occurrence this pain. First of all, look, it's spastic pain. And explanation on this pain will be due to spasm of the smooth muscle of the esophagus and usually combined with functional dysphagia. This pain in acute paroxysmal irradiated to the spine and passed by itself. Spastic pain, which we can explain, spastic contraction of the smooth muscle of the esophagus due to dysphagia, due to problem with the swallowing uh, of the food. Significant for nerve spatial. Reason of um, spastic pain. Spasm of the low esophageal sphincter. Pain is localized in the low part of the esophageal, um, the low or the third part of the sternum in the projection of the low part of the esophagus closer to connection with the stomach. And esophageal spasm. Pain is localized behind the sternum throughout its entire duration. So two reasons for development, uh, spastic type of pain. Next type of pain, distensional pain from Latin language, distensio or stretching. And we can explain this pain by the stretching of the wall of the esophagus. The wall of the esophagus, it's also muscles. Yes, so the muscles can stretch in. And distensional pain, type of pain we can explain by the stretching of the walls. More often, such type of pain combined with organic dysphagia, it occurs with stenosis, tumors of the esophagus, and is due to the accumulation of food above the norovin of the esophagus in the critical space. Not it, it's not the spasm in the critical point of norovin of the esophagus and stretching its wall up uh, this problem. And as a rule, it's combined with vomiting 
with esophageal vomiting, after which it decreases or completely stops at all. So um, the act of vomiting leading to reducing distension type of pain and reduce this problem. Distension uh, type of pain significant for um, organic dysphagia. Spastic type of pain significant for functional dysphagia. Next, next group of pain, pain which caused by direct irritation of the new findings of the mucous membrane of the esophagus. It's also possible. Often, the cause of irritation of the esophageal mucosal receptors with acidic content that are through from the stomach. Possible, possible. In case of insufficiency, low esophageal sphincter, like the main problem in the gastroesophageal reflux disease, the contents of the stomach can lead to the lumen of the esophageal and leading to such problem and leading to development exactly um, pain, which will be irritated by not receptors. In the esophagus, a neutral or alkaline environment is normal, normal um, uh, level of pH. By nature, this pain is burning, and usually this pain will be combined with heartburn by the um, similar mechanism of development. Difficult to differentiate it from each other. <coughs> is it will be heartburn or is it will be um, pain which will be cause uh, irritation, not receptors. But uh, this type of pain have to be differentiated from coronarogenic type of pain, from which this pain differs in the following points. Because uh, um, I remind that uh, we discussed with you uh, one picture uh, in the lecture about coronarogenic type of pain, where we discussed all reasons of development heart pains or sternum pain, pain or pain behind the sternum. Yes, and we discussed uh, at this case is also a problem with esophageal sphincter or problem with the esophagus. So which difference uh, we have to know coronarogenic type of pain from uh, the heartburn and from the pain which causing by the irritation of detectors. Appears after eating and this pain uh, um, will uh, a patient will tell you and will connect it also with uh, eating and with taking a meal, especially plentiful and carbonate drinks. Amplifies or appears in the horizontal position and in a position with the body tilt forward. Why in horizontal position? Because during the problem with the low esophageal sphincter, if patient will take horizontal position, Think to not working good and the contents from the stomach can lead to the esophageal and leading to irritation and to leading to development heartburn also. And free is stopped by the uh, is stopped by the intake of antacids, for example, milk. And taking antacids or taking a milk, uh, you can use in this test for checking coronarogenic or non-coronarogenic. Uh, like uh, taking a nitroglycerine, but unfortunately, sometimes taking nitroglycerine will be uh, will have also positive effect in case of um, um, distension type of pain, which will be contact with stretching of the muscle. Taking nitroglycerine leading to vasodilatation, not only um, vasodilatation uh, wall of the vessels, but vasodil uh, but dilatation of the smooth muscles. Yes, cause wall of the vessel. Uh, including smooth type of muscles. And sometimes taking nitroglycerin helps uh, the patient with esophageal diseases, but in case of distension pain. So like a chest in case of um, pain, which caused with the irritation, the test will be intake antacids or milk. What we have uh, for what we have to pay our attention, the question in the of the acid content of the stomach into the esophagus is called gastroesophageal reflux and the disease of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Next type of pain um, patient with uh, esophageal diseases 
pain due to involvement in the pathological process of the serous membrane which covers uh, the abdominal part of the esophagus involved in the pathological process the serous membrane the reason germinating tumor penetration of the esophageal ulcer two main reasons it's usually constant increasing in intensity intensifying with a change in body position which uh, leading to change in um, the condition between uh, this uh, tumor so penetration ulcers and the lumen of the esophageal with um, a shaking riding jumping and sudden movements Surely, yes, look, we discussed with you organic type of dysphagia and the first reasons we discussed with you, it's blockage or um, obstruction by internal and external uh, type of diseases and esophageal cancer, it's a first a tumor inside the lumen of uh, cancer, it's a first reason of developing organic type of dysphagia. Next compliance patient with um, esophageal diseases, it's heartburn or burning sensation behind or under the sternum. Heartburn does not indicate the level of acidity of the gastric juice. With a decrease in hydrochloric production, the motor activity of the stomach slows down as it's a natural stimulant of motility. So, decreasing the, uh, and decreasing the amount of the production of the hydrochloric acid, the motor activity of the stomach slow down, cause hydrochloric acids, natural and normal uh, stimulant for activation motility of the stomach. As a result, the presence uh, or the pressure in the stomach rises and the cardiac sphincter opens and the gastric contents can go through the low esophageal sphincter to the esophagus. The mechanism of occurrence of heartburn is associated with the throwing of the contents of the stomach into the lumen of the esophagus and irritation of the sensitive receptors of its mucosal membrane, or in fact, irritation of not receptors. Up to 50 reflexes are noted per day in a healthy person. It's normal, yes, but not more than 50 reflexes during the day, especially at night, while the total reflux time per day is not more than one hour. If more reflexes will be noted and their total time increases, then um, we can talk about pathology and damaging the mechanism of regulation activity of the low esophageal sphincter. Normally, reflex state uh, is quickly neutralized or which um, regurgitated uh, juice or regurgitated content is, is quickly neutralized due to the production by the glands of the submucous membrane of the esophagus of uh, the bicarbonates, as well as uh, swallow it, saliva, heaven, and alkaline reaction. So hypersalivation and reaction of hypersalivation is one of the signs of gastroesophageal diseases. So, and sometimes uh, some patient will tell you about hypersalivation, but uh, uh, sometimes you have to ask uh, this specific question. And if patient will tell you about hypersalivation, maybe you take in mind about gastroesophageal disease if, disease if patient will continue uh, about complaints, about heartburns, about pain, about dysphagia. The time during which the esophagus is freed from the reflux is called the esophageal clearance. So, time from reflux to reflux we can call by uh, like a esophageal clearance. And look, it's a, it's a scheme of development esophageal reflux. Yes, look, containing white yellow, containing um, hydro hydrochloric acid like a normal regulation of motility, like the main component of the stomach juice um, for, um, for working uh, normally way, gastrointestinal tract. But by such region, 
Yes, the law is that tegel sticker working not good when menu region. Look, pressure there increased. Yes, and the law is that maybe this law is a tegel sticker um, not closed after the um, flowing um, the meal uh, through the lumen of the tegel to the stomach. Maybe uh, a low tegel sinker will be open due to increasing pressure in uh, the um, cavity of the stomach. And the contents uh, from the stomach, which contain and which including big amount of the hydrochloric acid, passed through the sinker to uh, the is of lumen of the isotegal. It's not. It's abnormal. It's regurgitation. Yes, it's not normal passage. It's regurgitation. And it will be regurgitation of the meal from the stomach, which will be mixed with the hydrochloric acid, will be a first a first reason of development such burning sensation uh, in the chest and such burning sensation until behind the sternum through the irritation, the knotted septors uh, on the um, serous membrane of the esophageal. Look, normal position of the gastroesophageal, uh, low esophageal sphincter, and problem position or damage or destroy position of low is a tegel sphincter, which leading to regurgitation through the sphincter to the lumen of um, the isotegal. Next compliance um, patient with the isotegal diseases is Belgian. In one literary discharge of gases from the stomach, into the oral cavity. Causes of belching, failure, again, failure of the low is a tegel sphincter. In, in fact, practically all um, complaints of the patient um, with disease of isotegus will be rounded near the low is a tegel sphincter. So failure of the low is a tegel sphincter, intake of a big amount of carbonate drinks, and collect the gas in the upper part and the gas bladder, uh, gas uh, bladder and the gas uh, um, in the upper part of the stomach. Hasty food with dry and solid food. The diagnostic failure is the presence of odor. The smell of the rotten eggs is absorbed with a long delay in food in the stomach. We uh, long duration the stain of the food in the stomach. In case of stenosis of the stomach or in case of pyloric stenosis, slowing down the motility of the stomach, which leading to stain the food uh, inside the stomach, and address the absence of hydrochloric acid at all. About smell of rotten eggs. Next, the smell of rancid oil is absorbed with a decrease in the secretory function of the stomach and the formation of organic acid as a result of fermentation, which gives the air like a particular smell. A smell with bitter aftertaste, a sign of duodenal gastric reflux, and belching intensify after eating in a position with the other head lowered in the body tittle forward. So, yes, in case of after taking the meal, take a horizontal position because not working low is a tegel sphincter. With belching, a portion of the ingested food from the stomach to the esophagus and oral cavity will regurgitate. Unfortunately, not only air, not only gas from the um, stomach, but sometimes yes, some part of the meal and some portion of the food also can regurgitate to the oral cavity, and we can call it religion, uh, religion, which cause of regurgitation of uh, the food to the oral cavity, stenosis of the stomach pyloric stenosis of the stomach and slowing the evacuation uh, of food from the stomach. Regurgitation is combined with pain in the esophagus, belching and heartburn. 
Persistent bumping and regurgitation required the exclusion of organic pathology of the outlet of the stomach. Pay your attention. Yes, that persistent bumping and regurgitation required the exclusion of organic pathology. So it's a reason of development belching. Yes, and what? In fact, it's the same mechanism. Normally, working of low esophageal sphincter protect the person, the human, from developing belching. Also, after taking an, um, bicarbonate drinks, which uh, in in try, insurance by the gas, yes. But in case of uh, damaging the process of regulation activity of low esophageal sphincter. Some amount of the gas can regurgitate through um, the sphincter to the esophageal and to the oral cavity and can lead into assess some smell from this belching. And also some portion of um, a food which stain in during the time on uh, the cavity of the stomach can regurgitate uh, with uh, this gas uh, with, uh, to the oral cavity. Not only to the esophagus, only to the oral cavity, also to the oral cavity. Next compliance of the patient with um, digestive um, diseases is esophageal vomiting. Esophageal vomiting occurs with a significant narrowing of the esophagus due to the fact uh, that food accumulates above the narrowing point. So, yes, narrowing of the esophagus, and in fact, uh, the reason of developing esophageal vomiting is accumulation of the food above this problem. The wall of the esophagus is stretched and leading to development this dystonia type of pain and can be caused by periods of antiperistatic waves, and food masses are removed into the oral cavity and removed outside. Unlike vomiting of gastric origin and some difference from the gastric uh, origin and esophageal origin vomiting, first of all, the esophageal vomiting occurs without prior, uh, prior nausea. It's uh, preceded by a feeling of heaviness, fullness behind the sternum after eating and always contact with the taking the food. Vomit consists of fresh eating, just uh, was um, take um, a few minutes ago, 30 minutes ago. Not uh, digested food, moist in it with saliva, don't have a characteristic sour taste from the stomach, cause no contact with the hydrochloric acid, and is performed uh, without the participation of the muscle of the anterior abdominal wall. Next compliance uh, patient um, with the esophageal diseases, and maybe you can detect it already bleeding, and it's a bleeding. Which reason uh, of esophageal bleeding we have to know? Erosive and ulcerative lesion of the esophageal, of the structure of the wall of the esophageal, which can lead into development internal bleeding. Decaying tumor of the esophageal and damaging tumor of the esophageal. Mallory waste syndrome, like a main um, important uh, syndrome for surgery, longitudinal tears and the mucosa of the cardiac esophagus or stomach, which occurs with repeated and repeated vomiting, and more often after taking uh, alcohol and significant from, for patients with taken alcohol, less often during severe static physical extension. And the rupture of the varicose veins of the esophagus in patients with portal hypertension. And on the practical class, we discussed with you anastomosis between the portal then the system and the problem in the um, key point of the uh, portal then the system leading to development portal hypertension and leading to development three main types of anastomosis. And one of these type is anastomosis between the dens of uh, the um, lower part of the um, esophagus. So rupture, the there calls damaging dens. 
uh, can lead into development in esophageal bleeding, the nosus type of bleeding, but it will be bleeding. Next, uh, um, next, uh, next, next compliance. The patient is hakka. Reasons: diaphragmatic hiatal hernia of the diaphragm with irritation and stimulation near vagi, which uh, normally located in the uh, in the diaphragmatic window, and tumors also can lead into irritation near the vagi. So all reasons of HAPAC, uh, HACAP, it's irritation uh, and parasympathetic stimulation. Next, continue with the stomach, esophageal initial part, stomach, which compliance uh, from the patient we can assess uh, in case of stomach disease. Pain, nausea, vomiting, but stomach vomiting, compliance due to increased pressure in the stomach, belching, regurgitation, heartburn, impaired appetite, and bleeding. Look the same lists of um, the compliance but there is some difference about pain pain is the most frequent and sometimes the only compliance of patient with disease of the stomach and it's usually localized in the epigastrical region and in the left hypochondrium yes and if you um or if you remind about projection of and the develop, dividing uh, the anterior abdominal wall for nine areas, yes, epigastrical region, it will be exactly under the soid process, yes, epigastrical region, and right hypochondrium, it's projection of the liver. So, if, it, if uh, we uh, try to difference Localization, the pain in case of esophageal damaging, yes, a pain in esophageal patient will be uh, located under uh, the sternum or behind the sternum. In case of stomach diseases, located in the epigastrical region and in the left hypochondrium. The epigastrical region is the meeting place or meeting point practically for all type of pain. Also, if you uh, remind about projection of zone of shofar, yes, yes, it's some down, but irritation of the nervous impulse and irritation of the notitectors can lead into irritation, uh, the pain from the zone of shofar to the epigastrical, it's uh, not very far. For reasons of um, pain of the epigastrium, uh, we can divide it uh, into some types. Pain, again, some types of pain. Pain which associated with damage to, of the stomach and duodenum. Pain which caused by damage of uh, other organs of the abdominal cavity and gallbladder, for example, biliary tract, in case of acute and chronic cholecystitis, in case of cholelithiasis, uh, um, or present stones inside uh, the gallbladder or inside the lumen of the common bile duct, in case of damaging pancreas, in, in, in case of uh, damaging liver and enlargement liver, yes. Uh, spleen and kidney, all these um, organs can lead to development um, pain in the epigastrical region. Pain with acute diseases of the abdominal organs, in case of appendicitis, which lead into the local peritonitis, intestinal obstruction, will, will, which can lead into the diffuse peritonitis, and ectopic pregnancy, also leading to local peritonitis. Fourth type of pain, pain radiating to the epigastrium, which radiated to epigastrium. In patients with heart disease, and we discussed with you that sometimes some patient will tell you about pain not um, behind the sternum, exactly in the epigastrical region. It's possible about simultaneous regulation, narration, stratify aortic aneurysm, and if you remind about normal anatomy of abdominal cavity, you remind about projection of the abdominal part of aorta and any rhythm of the abdominal part of aorta can lead to development pain, pain above this organ. And uh, can pain can radiate from the inflammation on the basal part of the pleural sheets 
with pain and but uh, difference will be that pain will be associated with the process of the breathing in case of dry pleurisy yes associated and not will be simultaneously this type of pain will be present only from the one side mole about spastic pain spastic pain due to spasm of the smooth muscle of the stomach the same mechanism spastic pain of the stomach will be contact with the spasm of the smooth muscle of the stomach and the reason uh, will be a hyper acid condition and producing big amount of the hydrochloric acid diseases are localized in the antrum Prepyloric and pyloric stomach and duodenum occurs with high pyrrhosid condition, accumulation of NGC cells, which producing gastrins, which stimulated lying cells of the gastric glands and which leading to stimulation of hydrochloric produ produ production. In the antrum, gastritis and peptic ulcers are often localized, and by nature, spastic pain is acute, intense, proxismal, irradiated to the spine, and it's stopped uh, or by heart or, uh, or after taking um, antispasmo, uh, antispasmolytics uh, drugs or antacids also. Distension type of pain due to distension of the wall but of the stomach cause stenosis of the stomach and cicatrical deformation of the stomach after stenosis, compression of the stomach with a tumor and large polyp, slowing down of gastric motility to the side of hypo and anacid condition, condition, Compression of the stomach uh, from the outside with an enlarged pancreatic head or enlarged lymph nodes. And by nature, the pain, this type of pain will be dual, bursting, indicates by patient uh, like a feeling of heaviness uh, in the epigastrical region. It occurs uh, after eating and especially plenty food. Also, uh, distension type of pain in case of damage in stomach are accompanied by a fast feeling of fullness and nausea. And to relieve this painful and unpleasant sensation, the patient artificially induced vomiting, which, um, uh, which taken and brings uh, relief um, and reduce such uncomfortable pleasing from the side of the patient. Peritoneal type of pain, which associated with irritation or involvement in the pathological process of the peritoneum. And it can be two types, acute peritoneal pain and chronic peritoneal pain. Acute peritoneal pain, the reason of perforation of the wall of the stomach uh, by reason of the ulcer or tumor growth, and it comes suddenly unexpectedly it shot intense very intense pain and it's compared to a dagger so it's called dagger pain chronic type of peritoneal pain the mechanism of uh, its occurrence is uh, associated with the germination of the wall of the stomach and germination of the serous membrane uh, in tumors or perigastritis. This pain is moderate uh, with cancer more intensified and constant with tumor. Tumors are provoked by eating, changing body position, sudden uh, movements, jumping and walking. So peritoneal pain, involvement in the pathological process peritoneum, and we can give two types of pain, acute and chronic. Acute it's also surgery problem right now. Chronic, it's also surgery problem, but, but due to time. When you are well detailing the pain, you need to find some moments, localization of the pathological process, localization in the body of the stomach, significant to the left of the midline or in the left hypochondrial body of the stomach. And if you remind about anatomy, Yes, body of the stomach shifting to the light, yes, uh, to the left. So light from the middle, left from the middle line and left hypochondrium. Cancer or peptic ulcer, parietal cells in the zones are more superficial and are affected first. About cardiac section of the stomach immediately under the gexoid process and look, 
cardiac part closer to epigastrical region to epigastrical areas under the geoxoid process. Also, the uh, main reason will be cancer. Pyloric duodenal zone, remind pyloric duodenal zone, it's five and six centimeter above the navel to the right um, of the middle line. Also, we have to detail in uh, the nature of the pain, which determined by the mechanism of its occurrence. And remind about mechaspastic pain, distension pain, um, peritoneal pain. Next, irradiation of the pain and patient with uh, damaging of the stomach. With localization of the pathological process in the body, bottom, and cardiac part of the stomach, in these cases, the pain can radiate to the left half of the sternum. And in elderly uh, patient, it must be differentiated from intracardiac pain. Uh, in case of localization pathological process in the antrum of the stomach, the pain can radiate to the right hypochondrium. Pepticulture of the stomach and duodenum is characterized by pain which localized in the right hypochondrium. With localization of the pathological process in the posterior wall of the stomach, the pain radiates to the spine and low back. Sometimes uh, it's happy zosters since the back wall of the stomach is in contact with the pancreas, especially penetrating ulcer through uh, the wall of the stomach to um, the body of the pancreas. Next point which we uh, have to assess and pay attention during concretization this type of pain, communication or a relationship with taking the food. A clear connection with meals and with moment of taking the food is characteristic of stomach pains and significant for stomach pains. And we can differentiate it, uh, such type of um, pain uh, by uh, this feature. Early pain occurs 30 and 60 minutes after eating, uh, last one and one half hour and gradually decreased as food is, evacu is evacuated from the stomach. And they are characteristic of disease uh, localized in the low and middle uh, third part of the body of the stomach. So low part and middle part of the body of the stomach, early pain. Late pain occur after uh, one hour and one half and two hours after eating and are significant for disease which are accompanied by hypersecretion of hydrochloric acid. After eating and after taking a food, this type of pain um, can decrease. For hyperacid condition, the so-called so um, called hungry pains that occurs four or six hours after eating more often at night because we're taking a food for example at the evening at the light evening yes and next on the night um, night time uh, patient can feel in so-called hungry pains and decreased also after eating or taking antacids so early pain Late pain, contact with hydrochloric acid, hypersecretion of hydrochloric acid, and hungry pains also significant for patients with peptic ulcers. And in the nature of development, peptic ulcers is disbalance uh, in the producing uh, of the hydrochloric acid. Uh, also, we have to assess the factors that enhance or ease pain or taken or reduce the pain. Increase uh, factors which lead to increased pain. Position on the back with localization of the pathological process on the back of the stomach. Intake of acidic food in hyperacid condition. Intake of large amount of food. Change in body position and wave lifting. Uh, which factors can stop this pain? Antacid and uh, hyperacid condition in case of hyperacid condition. Heart anti um, spasmolytics for spastic pain and uh, uh, the heart temperature um, and the hot temperature uh, can reduce the spasm of the smooth muscles and narcotic analgetics for malignant neoplastic forms of damaging. Next, vomiting. 
like a compliance patient with the, the stomach disease. Vomiting is a complex reflex act of involuntary injection of the contours of the stomach into the esophagus through the esophagus oral cavity and noise. The mechanism of the appearance of the vomiting in disease of the stomach is due to two factors, an increase in pressure inside the stomach and stretching walls of the stomach, resulting in irritation of sensitive receptors, which are the endings um, and uh, the final part of the nervi vagi, and it will be due to cholinergetic receptors, due to stimulation by the etetyl uh, haloi. Direct irritation of the sensitive receptors of the mucose membrane with chemicals, poor quality of food. Which signs of gastric vomiting we have to know? Because uh, some uh, time ago we discussed with you esophageal vomiting. So for gastric vomiting, uh, significant that gastric vomiting occurs 30, 60, 90 minutes after eating, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, eat if the food should be present inside the stomach to lead in the vomiting. Uh, at the high of digestion, during the process of digestion, vomiting as a rule is preceded by nausea and the feeling of heaviness in the epigastrical region in the left hypochondrium and like some distensional type of pain after stretching. Yes, mm -hmm. and if we consider it with the esophageal vomiting, before the esophageal vomiting, patient can't feel in the nausea, yes? So next, warm, uh, warm it plentiful, contain the remnants of the food and uh, um, um, containing the foods which taken the day before in case of pyloric stenosis. And if it will be vomiting by the food which are present uh, in the stomach a long time. Warm it have a, such characteristic acidic odor and containing hydrochloric acid. And it will be acidic smell. Gastric vomiting cause mixed with the um, stomach juice, which contain hydrochloric acid. Gastric vomiting, as a rule, brings relief. And epigastrical pain decrease or disappears, and nausea and hypersalivation stops also. Allocate a special variance of gastric vomiting, it's stenotic vomiting. The reason of stenosis of the output of the stomach or pyloric part, post-ulcer scars and formation um, damaging and defiguration of the pyloric part. As a result, the evacuation of the food from the stomach can be slowing uh, and the walls of the stomach stretch, which lead to development vomiting. Uh, if uh, there is a large amount of bile in the vomit, it's possible. This indicates duodenitis and development inflammation um, in the duodenum and slow passage of the heme from the duodenum, pancreatitis, gallstone disease, adhesion, tumors of the head of the pancreas. A uh, big amount of bile in the vomit can be a sign of all these diseases. The presence of fecal odor of fecal smell of vomit is a sign of intestinal obstruction or gastrointestinal fistula. The presence of blood in any form of vomit is a sign of gastric bleeding. Any localization, but it's gastric bleeding. Prolonged, often recurring gastric vomiting can lead into exhaustion of the patient and trophic insufficiency and leading to weight loss and trophic insufficiency, nutrition insufficiency. Can lead into development dehydration, loss of big amount of the intercellular fluid, several meta metabolic disturbance due to the loss of uh, such elements like uh, uh, fluor, like uh, mm, sodium, like uh, calcium ions and metabolic and can lead into development metabolic alkalosis and some uh, metabolic damaging leading to hyponatremia 
and in, in can lead into terrible edema, hypokalemia, and decreased blood pressure, development heart rhythm disturbance. Next, compliance of the patient with stomach diseases, nausea. Nausea, a painful, unpleasant feeling of, in, of impending vomiting, and nausea in disease of the stomach usually preceded vomiting. It's normally, yes, all of us knew about it, but mean it and in vomiting. Sometimes we can feel a nausea, but without vomiting. The mechanism of nausea is due to subthreshold irritation of the vomiting center and stimulation the vomiting center, which located in the medulla prolongata. It's accompanied by hypersalivation due to the nearby centers of the nervi glossotharyngeus and due to the excitation of the adjacent decimeter center and center of nervi vagi, vegetative reaction appears like a dizziness, like a decreased blood pressure, like a pallor of the skin, like a tachycardia, like a general weakness, which will be previous before uh, the nausea and vomiting, or can be combined. The symptom complex is called feeling of lightheadedness. It's a sign of the stomach ulcer, stomach cancer, and intestinal ischemia in case of uh, stomach disease issue, but sometimes it can be uh, just a uh, um, healthy person. And in this slide, you can assess the mechanism of development nausea. Look, vomiting center are located in the medulla, and uh, which damage not the vestibular apparatus due to stimulation, dopamine and serotonin, and released and can lead into the nausea. Uh, irritation of hemoreceptors and trigger zones due to mechanism dopamine and serotonin also released to the vomiting. And gastrointestinal stimulation due to mechanism of stimulation per sympathetic system due to histamine and acetylcholine released to the vomiting, nausea and vomiting. So, and if you look to another part of the slide, exactly to the act of the vomiting, so the center sending the signals, yes, somata, so, uh, somata uh, motor signals um, uh, two ways, first to the soft palate, to closing, yes, and to closing uh, of the glottis, and next, somata uh, motor signals leading to contraction of the diaphragm and abdominal mass to help uh, to put in outside uh, the contest of the stomach to le leading to increasing in uh, the level of abdominal pressure and leading to contraction of the stomach and uh, putting down all contours from the stomach through the low esophageal sphincter, esophageal oral cavity and outside. So next, gastric bleeding. Gastric bleeding also like a sign of a stomach damaging. Uh, the reasons, ulcer of the stomach and bulb of the duodenum or taking non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, like a sign and can develop ulcers of the stomach and can exacerbation uh, after taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, erosion of the stomach and bulb of the duodenum, decay of the tumor of the stomach, rupture of varicons then of the cardiac section of the stomach in the malaria base syndrome and disorders in the hemostatic system. Uh, system thrombocytopenia, thrombocytopathy, and so on, and different types of vasculitis. Uh, maybe sometimes some liver disorders can lead into uh, disorders um, and developing the syndrome of hypocoagulation and can lead into developing different uh, nature of the bleeding. There are two main signs of gastric bleeding if we consider it with the esophageal bleeding, bloody vomiting and bloody stools, the main. Surely, uh, gastric bleeding, it's the simultaneous topic for discussion between the surgery and between the therapist uh, cause. Sometimes the therapist will find it, it will be uh, like a first doctor, but you have to know that uh, it is order for surgery. So, the color and nature of vomit during gastric bleeding is determined by the rate of bleeding and the volume of blood pouring into the stomach. 
Vomiting of scarlet unchanged blood indicates continued bleeding. Unchanged anterior blood indicates for us continued bleeding from the stomach at the time of vomiting and the large volume of spilled blood in a relative short period of time. The dark brown color of the vomit or the color of the coffee grounds or the uh, color uh, um, like a like a coffee with milk sometimes, uh, so-called only, indicates a relatively slow bleeding and blood retention in the stomach for several hours. After influence and after contact with the hydrochloric acid, normally such, uh, such substance like a blood changing the, no, changing, uh, the color to the coffee color or coffee grounds color. And during this time, under the influence and during contact with hydrochloric acid, hemoglobin turns into the hematin hydrochloride and changing and indicates that the bleeding happened in a few hours ago. So unchanged um, blood color indicate continuously bleeding right now. Changing color to the coffee color indicates that bleeding happened a few years ago and was a moment of con contact with hydrochloric acid. If the volume of the spiled blood is more than uh, 60 and 80 millimeters, then after 8 and 12 hours, a second symptom of gastric or esophageal or is intestinal bleeding, uh, maybe um, no blood vomiting, yes? Um, such small bleeding and uh, um, uh, this um, amount of the blood enters to the stomach through the esophagus or from the stomach to the duodenum. And the next symptom of gastric bleeding appears black, gruel like stool of the color of um, tar. And we can call it melena in the Latin English. Black, gruel like stool. If the blood volume is less than uh, 60 uh, millimeters, acute and acute bleeding, local bleeding, small bleeding, there is no golem and vomiting, and bleeding is detected by sharply positive stool reaction to occult blood, uh, ferrum ions, and symptoms of post-hemorrhagic enemy, if you can determine it uh, after taking the blood general analysis. What we have to know that normally the stool reaction to acute blood is always slightly positive. Why? Because foods containing the ions uh, of uh, ferrum are uh, practically in all person. And also pay your attention if uh, your patient taken uh, anti-anemic drugs, which include in, um, ferrum containing drugs, also very active uh, for the cold blood of the stool will be positive. So black gruel like stool, then bleeding uh, uh, was more than uh, 60, 80 millimeters, um, milliliters, if less than 60, positive reaction uh, to the cold blood, which including uh, therum. The main complaint the patient with intestinal diseases include abdominal pain, flatulence, rumbling and transfusion uh, in the intestine, stool disorders, and bleeding. Which pain? Pain for disease of the small intestine is localized in the parumbilicans region and remind about anatomy, yes? Around the navel and for disease of the large intestine in the left and more often and right iliac region, left and right hypochondria. The most common cause of pain in the right hypochondrium is colon disease. Distinctive signs of pain in the intestine. Lack of communication with meals, no communication with meals. With organic diseases of the intestine, pain appears of uh, intensifying the second half of the day, closer to evening at night. And this is due to the daily rhythm of the intestine. <clears throat> For reason and mechanism of occurrence, we can differentiate into pain in the intestine also by several types. Spastic pain. Inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, ischemic colitis, 
helminthic in, uh, infestation, poisoning with salt of heavy metals like mercury, arsenic, mercury chloride, irritable bowel syndrome, the pain does not have strict localization, often it's a girdle like sharp paroxysmal decreases or stop with uh, antispasmolytic drugs or pass on its own. And this spastic pain is called intestinal colic. Distension pain. Look, this the similar genesis, but the different features for any part of the gastrointestinal tract. Distension pains, significant flatulence or included gas, constipation, organic obstacles along the intestine or intestinal obstruction. The pain will be due bursting often in the hypochondria, and it's usually intensified at night after taking foods that trigger, which can lead into development flatulence and will be triggered of flatulence. And uh, this type of pain stops after the discharge of gases, bowel movements and cleansing enema. Peritoneal pains, acute and chronic again. Acute, perforation of the intestine wall with ulcerative colitis, perforation of the intestine wall with tumor decay, perforation of the interstinal, uh, interstinal wall with the foreign body, for example, fish bone, some another, some ego, transition of the inflammatory process to the peritoneum in Crohn's diseases, it comes suddenly, unexpectedly, and sharp and very intense. About chronic peritoneal pains in case of intestinal disease, adgesive disease of the abdominal cavity and some aggravation, some adhesion between the amentum, aseptic inflammation of the peritoneum and periodic disease, and periproxis. Next, stool disorders. In disease of the gastrointestinal tract is manifested in the form of diarrhea, constipation, or their alternation. For disease of the small intestine, diarrhea is more significant. Constipation in disease of the small intestine occurs more often with intestinal obstruction. And for disease of the large intestine, diarrhea is significant as well as constipation or their alternation. Diarrhea is called more loose stool, excretion of thickest and larger amount in normal amount of the thickest from the 100 till the 20, till the 200 of grams, more uh, than uh, 300 grams and polycalcium and frequent stools, usually two times a day, and more frequency, more amount of the times. And we can determine uh, the DRA for motor DRA, which increased with intestinal motility. Uh, this is a, a prerequisite for all types of DRA and often secondary. Motor DRA is the primary increase in bowel motility. And the acceleration of peristalsis leads to the rapid advancement of the heme along the intestine, as a, as a result of which uh, food um, increments don't have time to digest, and water and hydrochloric product uh, um, not have uh, time to be absorbed, which causes of motor um, diarrhea. Neurosis or beer disease, uh, an increased contact, uh, content of acetylcholine on the intestinal wall due to stimulation of nerve system. Gastrinomas, which gastrin directly affects muscle elements and increasing activity of the muscle elements. Stereotoxicosis and stimulation nervous system. And irritable bowel syndrome or diarrhea intermittent and periodic provoked by psycho-emotional arousal. Often occurs in the mornings, the alarm symptom is the symptom of irritable bowel syndrome and the urge to defecate it one, two, three times with the release of the small amount of the figures without pathological impurities at all. 
Asthmotic type of diarrhea and the reason of development and insufficiency of secretory function of the stomach, gastritis with secretary, uh, secretory insufficiency in gap recept condition, the phenomenon of constipation will be noted. Secretory uh, pancreatic insufficiency, diseases of the liver and biliary tract, uh, which are accompanied by the dilation of the synthesis and the excretion of the bile. Signs of osmotic diarrhea. Number of the bowel um, uh, movements are uh, you know, three or four times a day, provoked by eating. Ficus is evident, contains the remains of poorly digested food, has a grazy, shiny appearance due to the content of fats. Normal fat and thickus is not. We can't determine, yes. Stertoray is a characteristic sign of osmotic diarrhea. Microscopy and thickus fatty acid, natural fats, a sign of secretory insufficiency of the pancreas and liver. And stops uh, at fasting. Secretory type of diarrhea caused by the active transport of the erythrocytes and water from the intestinal wall to the lumen of the intestinal. Which reason? Bacteria producing enterotoxins, which enter to the small intestine through the mouth. Uh, toxic infection, certain viruses, uh, including adenoviruses, rotaviruses, hepatic infection, some protozoa infection, and premature uh, deconjugation of bile acid, gastrin, and calcitonin. Which signs uh, of secretory diarrhea? Number of the bowel elements up to 10 or more times a day. Ficus evident, 10 or more liters per day. Watery, yellowish, containing mucus, diarrhea is not stopped by fasting, dehydration of the body and several electrolyte disturbance rapidly increased, and then thickens five a large number of electrocytes. Next type of diarrhea is ex exudative diarrhea. It develops with inflammatory bowel disease. Ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, ischemic colitis with inflammation of the intestinal wall, exudates is released into the lumen, which dilutes the stool, and in addition, inflammation of the intestinal wall leads to increased peristalsis. Which signs? Frequent stool, but ficus are located in small portion. Ficus as a rule mixed with blood, mucus, or pus. Is accompanied by abdominal pain when uh, often occurs at night. Since together with ficus, patient lose a large amount of protein and then the develop of hypoproteinemia, rapid weight loss, the develop of uh, hypoanchotic or hypoproteinemic edema, uh, significant of exudative from um, diarrhea. Colonic diarrhea symptoms very frequent stool, but ficus are scarce. The appearance of painful udges to defecate with the release of small amount of ficus is significant. Often, instead of ficus, mucous blood passes release it. Getting in the inflammated surface of the rectal mucus, mucus, blood or pus irritated the receptors and caused the urge to defecate, and this is a sign of classically dysentery. So I suggest to finish for today. Next week, we'll continue about the um, instrumental method of diagnostics of gastrointestinal tract disease. Thank <music> you.